Hey, Yagen. How's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah. Seems like no one is here yet. All right. Yeah. Uh, Am I audible, though? Yes. I, yeah, I have the wrong microphone. Or wrong. Let's see. There we go. All right. Can you say something? Yes. All right. Sorry. Yeah, it was me. My headset was on the wrong one. All right. Okay. Let's see. Way first Friday meeting. Yay. Um, let's see. Okay. So um, let me just finish. So what have you guys been up to? Oops. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, you're going to be using mock a lot. Um, so let's see. Okay. Um, have you merged master recently? Okay. Yeah. Let's do that because that'll make sort of the diff a little easier. Um, let's see. Oh, nope, I am not. Thank you. Right. Yeah, that's all good. Okay, so, let's see. Oh, okay, great. Oh, get rid of containers. Status running containers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, and then oh, yeah. So okay, so let's see. Let me just make sure I've looked at everything. Um, uh, okay, and this is all good. Oh, I forgot to comment on here. Okay. Um, there's one thing that we need to do on. Here. Sorry. Say again. I did delete that comment because I realized, um, well, so I was thinking about things and, um, uh, okay. So the thing is, ideally we call out sub process as uh, little as possible. Um, bless you. Um, and because it's, it, you take, a bit of a performance hit when you call it to the sub process <laughs> rather than when you just do it um, within, within the library, library itself. Um, so it's sometimes nice to use, like it's usually nice to use like the Docker SDK or whatever. Um, the thing is though that like the restarting of the containers, um, the restarting of the containers is, let's see what it was run like, right? Um, so I should see. to do let's see here mm. all right so to use third-party dependencies they have to be um, sort of like kept up to date from a security perspective um, this is not what I'm looking for. And I'm just a little bit concerned that this one doesn't seem to have a lot of activity. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's not a lot of activity going on here. Um, so, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Say again.
Yeah, that JavaScript one. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, so the thing is, there's there's another thing, though, is that if it doesn't exist, we have to start it. Um, so, right, and, and so, I'm, yeah, so we need the initial command to start it, right? And so, because if, it, if you start the service and the container doesn't exist, then, well, yeah, you have to start it, right? Um, in that case, we might just want to we might just want to have that command be like, oh gosh, where are we going? Okay, here. Um, where's the Docker file? Okay, right, so there's a common syntax that people kind of use where they'll say like um, uh, usage, and then they'll have like you know Docker run, uh, you know whatever, right? Um, and so it might be good for us to um, to require that this is in the Docker file, and then that way we basically we just run this command, right? Um, because we have to we have to start it if it doesn't exist, right? And run like only helps us if it does exist. Um, and then this way we also remove the dependency on run like. Um, so it will involve parsing out this command from the uh, from the Docker file, but it's basically the rules on this are so. Let's see. Um, so because we may have to start the container if it hasn't been started, um, we should. Uh, let's see. Uh, we should. Um, require that docker files have a usage statement um, parse or from when you see docker run until um, until uh, the from or a blank a comment with a blank line so that would be just that um, um, assume that it's the docker command um parse parse it using shellix um and this is shellix um this function right here oops oops where did it go so da -da -da. All right, so then, then that way we'll basically just, uh, so we'll use this as the docker command to run. Um, and let's see, is there anything? Yeah, I guess for now we'll just take it straight and we'll just run it. Um, okay. Yes. yes, yes, okay, that's a good note. So let's say uh, we should edit the Docker file in skill slash operations to include this. All right, great, 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 great. Um, let's see, and then, okay, how do you test this? So you have a test, um, a test, right now don't you where did it go this test right here so oh you're only running a subset of them I see okay um, where do I have a good example I have an example of this. Um, let's see so go ahead 
Um, let's see. Okay. So, oh, there's an example for this somewhere. Where is it? Um, um, we faked the... Oh, damn, where is that? Uh, I have some code that is perfect for this. Um, oh, I can't think of it right now. I'll, I'll try, try to find it. it. Where, where the fuck is, is that code? code? Um, I have some code, code that... It, it might be here, even. It takes the... It basically fakes... Create, it, it mocks subprocess exact. Oh, oh, yes. Okay, it's for the release stuff. All right, okay. Um, okay. Um, so, test, test. Service, test dev. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. This is probably good. Example. Yeah, so check this out. Um, let's see. Yeah, this even mocks like the creation of a tar file. Um, so let's see. So basically, what we're doing here is this is this is for the test for the release command in in the development service. Um, basically, it mocks create sub process exec and then it says like here is your 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 fake process um so let's see oh yeah so this one substitutes it with a failed process and this one substitutes like this is the default fake process um and so this is just like how you might might do this if you wanted to. There's lots of different ways you could do it, but but this will give you sort of an example. And in this one, what it's doing is it's saying, oh, okay, like if you see archive in the command you're supposed to run, then you know you're going to run git archive, which in that case, I want you to create this. Um, uh, I want you to create this tar file. Um, so create uh, git archive creates a tar file from the repo, so we then just, create a tar file as a test tar file and write it to standard output um and so uh but this is just like an example of, of what you can do um and let's see uh so basically you just figure out like okay what do i need to mock and then uh you just you just make that fake process do whatever you're supposed to be doing for that given command um and so in your case here um, let's see, we call run like, or well, we're not going to call run like anymore. So, so not calling run like anymore. Instead, uh, running the command given by usage section of Docker file. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I told you I wasn't done reviewing this, and then I don't think I finished reviewing it. Unfortunately, I got really busy. So, um, let's see. So, Docker build t. Okay, Docker file. All right. Okay. So for this, we want to make sure that this should be. Um, let's see. This should be repo directory. Um, uh, path to use for context should be root of repo we're building. Uh, because then if you do things like copy from, um, it'll be correct. Um, but, but okay, so, so the, the other thing, thing is that you may just want to, like for this, because you're building the containers and everything, you probably just want to... Um, required docker on the system to run these tests um yeah uh oh okay i see you grab the parents okay i see i see okay well 
Yeah, you grab the first Docker file and then you you use the okay. So Docker file is not really the correct variable name here, but okay. Uh, yeah, and you can no worries. You can also use dot parent instead of uh, parent zero. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Ooh, next. I like that. That's nice. Um, that's a good way to do it instead of just taking the first index. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. That sounds good. Um, yeah, no worries. I mean, you can just do Docker file dot parent here then. Like that's what I would suggest. Uh, cause that makes it like the most clear. Um, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Got running containers. What does this do? What does this get status running containers do? Okay. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, running can, okay, so where's the flow? Um, I guess you don't have the whole thing set up yet, do you? Okay, I would so here's what I would suggest. I would suggest that you you um let me just make this a comment. So Make oh, okay. I see you have the the that notes document. Oh, okay. Let's see. Okay. Oh, it's okay. This is, I mean, there's too many. We just have so many files because of the package. I don't see it here. Um, let's see. What's it called? I think it might not have gotten added. Um, no worries, no worries. Okay, so that's that's fine. But you did so you you ran it though. Okay, so and you ran it and it and it, it was working. Or when you have Docker installs. All right, well, great. Hey, that's perfect. So I mean, I guess all all I would say then is just make the test case that you have. It looks like it's got a subset of things. Just make sure that it um, make sure that it. Um, uh, make sure that it just it just just have the test case run the whole thing, um, and you know then if Docker's not installed, the test case will fail, uh, which is what we want in this case because this is like this is dependent on Docker. Um, there's no, I mean you can fake this stuff, but then you're not really testing it. It's the problem. Um, so let's see. Um, You did. Let's see. Okay. Uh oh, not quite. That's okay. Um, let's see. Um, can we do? Uh, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. I. It's. It's like. It's. If it's. If it's. It's. If it's working, it's working, right? Um, so here's the other thing. So basically, just make the test case. Um, do. Do. Just make the test case do exactly what the flow does, um, and. If you export the flow and add the flow, um, okay. So let me let me make some notes for us. So, so um, deploy. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna remove dependent 
see. Uh, run like by parsing docker run command from usage uh, in docker file. Um, we're going to create, let's see, let's just make a note that um, data flow is working. Um, data flow is working. Let's see. Uh, will make test case, which um, has full data flow. Okay, and then uh, okay, and then this was the last thing. Sorry, go for it. I don't think I understand what you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so what... All right, get running containers. Okay, so I don't. I guess I don't understand why you had to do get status running containers in the first place. Oh, you wanted to have it as a di condition. Oh, I see. I see. I see. So you wanted to say. You wanted to say, get all the running containers, and then... Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, I think that's probably the right way to go here. Because if you're just doing running containers, containers, got running containers, and then got running containers, then... Okay, okay, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Okay, you wanted to gate it so that it happens first. So build... But in that case, you really want... You don't need that because restart running containers by tag will already take is image built. So, and it won't, right? Yeah, but so what I'm saying is if you have is image built as an output from the Docker build image, then you won't restart, restart the, the container because it looks like you have Docker container, Docker, Docker running containers. Which is okay. It's an input here. Let's see. Got running containers. And I should have visualized this. Let's see. Okay, you won't get the filtered output. Okay. Uh-huh. Ah, yeah, okay. So, docker image tag. You know, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm going to pull this. this. I, I need to, to, I need to see it. it. I, I can't, can't uh, I can't. can't. I'm not, let's see. I'm not, I'm not able to figure it out. So, let me just pull this down. Um, Uh, yeah, I guess we'll do. We'll take this offline. I mean, it sounds like you've got the right idea. If 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 you can make it work without it, do it. If not, don't, don't worry about it. it. Um, I would say leave it the way it is for now, um, and then and then change it later um, once you've got everything down pat, right? 
Um, so the last thing I wanted to say was that, um, uh, okay, so this stuff is great, um, but what we need to do is we need to sort of add another another level of, of customization here. So we need, so have, so remove def, um, then split on, then split on semicolon. Um, and if, so, and treat last index as definition and first index uh, as as what as preprocessing. Um, so uh, if we have like def JSON um, like we could have def raw um, and then my def initial, right? Um, and this means don't just just assign to definition. definition. Just assign response dot or let's see def. We should have a few things. We should have def um, bytes my definition assign which is assign response dot uh, what is it I, uh, read response because so the, the reason I'm saying this is because when we go to run this fmfmpeg operation um, right now it takes a file name as the input file Right, and what we're gonna want to do is we're going to ideally have it be like you know, uh, I think I think I think FFM can, can take input from standard input, in which case we can just stream it straight in, right? Um, and then your output will be some temporary file, and then you're gonna want to read out the temporary file as the as the as the results. Um, so, and that's going to also require some more, some more work on like, I don't know if you've seen the stuff um, that says there's comments about like presentation of JSON or blob. Um, yeah. It's... Yeah. So, yeah. So asynchronous is, is, I, and you know, I think that the, I'm not sure, I think they, I think maybe they just need a default value in, in the structure so that we could load in the structure and then not have to specify them in the config file. But asynchronous basically is going to mean like if this is a WebSocket connection or something, and we're going to keep it alive. Um, and so right now this is just a simple post request. So it's not going to, like you're, there's going to be no keep alive here. It's just going to be call response, which so it's not asynchronous. Um, and so that's that's what asynchronous means is basically treat this as a WebSocket or not. Um, and we might just, I mean, it might be better to just change that to WebSocket, true, false, right? I mean, because it's the HTTP server. So, um, but the the thing is, you're going to need to add, um, you, you're going to need to, to figure out how to, let's see, where is the int? Uh, you're going to need to do, uh, oops. Yeah, so presentation JSON is the only one that's defined right now, and you're gonna need to do like present. I think there's like a couple other ones like presentation text and presentation blob, and basically that's gonna say like write the output. Um, oh God, okay. That's gonna. Okay, so there's a couple ways we could do this. Basically, we could we could have it just like take the whole body of the output. Um, and, and the presentation was meant to be like, okay, when I get a response, like when I get my output operation and I get the results, uh, dictionary back, like, what do I do with that results dictionary? Right. And right now it's just like, okay, well you dump it out as JSON. Right. And in this case, we want to dump out the whole contents of the file. Right. Um, and so 
the best way we could do this would be um, is if we actually took the um, I wonder if we can I wonder if that's possible um, okay so basically what we need to do is we need to make something that's like just for now just change it so that you can have like presentation of blob or bytes I can't remember what I called it um, in the comments but make it so that if that's set we just take the bytes that were in the output stream and just write them out as the as the body right because this thing is going to be um it's it's you we want what the end result of this is is we want to write out that input input or that output dot mp4 um as or output dot gif i think in this case as just raw bytes right um because we're the goal here is to upload a, a video and get a gif back right um and so we need to we need to have the um we need to change it so that it doesn't just jump dump json right because right now what's going to happen is if we if we capture the body or if we if we return some object that has um that's just a string of bytes it's just going to json dump the bytes um and that won't go well it won't work um so we need to we need to modify that as well um so let's see um so okay, okay. And, and there, there was, was two things, things here actually so. sorry modify uh um so where http service does that make sense okay cool yeah, this is like it's challenging because we're trying to build a massively generic thing here, right? Um, let's see, where HTTP service has comments um, about presentation. Make it so that we can that if presentation is bytes blob whatever it is should probably it should probably be bytes um if it says blob um yeah i think i did that was dumb. um let's see um should probably be bytes um then we write out the response as bytes and set uh, instead, instead of json, JSON. And set the uh, what is it the content type header to application slash uh, octet stream or whatever, um, and we can could could make this configurable in the um, what is this channel Confirm. later if we want okay um, and then the last thing test stream okay um, and then the last thing oh yeah was this so this is um, bytes and then like stir you know and then we should have one that's uh, JSON, and then the main one of this would be. Um, oh, okay. okay I, I guess, guess we're not, not sure if we want to do this, but if you say stream, this was the original. I think. So, so I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure if you, you can, can take, take response and just feed it straight in and say, say you know, like create sub process exec std in equals response. That would be ideal if we could do that, because then basically we pass in the response object and FFmpeg just says, OK, I'm reading this, you know. Um, I'm not sure if we can do that. Um, that would be ideal. But we want um, uh, we want we we want to be able to do that. So um, input value equals response. Um, so let me just. Okay, so uh, I think their 
there's a text method, but let's see. Um, yeah, okay, this will be this will be helpful because then, you know, you might have different things that, you know, this this gives you the minimum amount of sort of pre-processing that we probably want to want to provide here. Um, and then the, the, the flow can, the operations and the flow can take care of the rest. Um, and let's see, so remove desk, split on blade, da, 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 da. okay, yeah, and then I'll just make a note on that. And I think then, unless there's anything else, is there anything else you wanted to talk about here? Okay. Cool. So, uh, provide options for how to treat put value uh, by person. What is that? Uh, it's called input mode. Okay. Sweet. Anything else we need to talk about, Agen? All right, cool. Thanks. Oh, and uh, I realized I kept saying, you know, people can drop from the call. And I, I realized not everybody may know what I mean when I say drop from the call. It means just like you can, you know, you can, you can, you can go do other things. You don't have to stay on the call if you don't want to. Obviously, like, you know, the, the meetings are optional anyways. It's just if you want to come talk about something. And so you can, you can, you can go when you're done. Uh, you don't have to wait to hear everything everyone else wants to say. I know, I know that some people do want to stay just because they're curious, but um, yeah, it's, there's no pressure. So um, let's see. All right. Okay. So who else is on here? Wow. Okay. We got a full house today. Um, Saksham, so you unmuted. Do you want to go? Yeah, let's see. So, okay, unified configuration. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, I love it when the code gets cleaner. Okay, let's see. Um, all right. So you made some comments on here. Sweet. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I haven't. Uh, what was the last? Okay, you made comments, but you didn't push anything, right? Okay. Let's see. Um, da -da -da. All right. So if we enter string value for CLI for log, it gets changed to its corresponding int value here. Providing an int value doesn't work in this case. Okay. Yes, it gets changed to its corresponding int value there. Okay, I see. Um, okay, then yeah, if you think so, then let's do that. Um, let's see. We don't have to. We don't have to derive from command config. Um, or well, okay, yeah. If man, oh yeah, if yeah, we do because of log. You're right. Um, but log should have a default. Yeah. So. Um, oh. Oh, I see what you're saying because we can't put non-default arguments after default arguments. Yes. Oh damn. God damn. All right. Okay. Um, at what level is that enforced? Was that, oh, is that just, let's see. Where, what throws that exception? Um, let, let me make some more notes here. So, um, mm -hmm. okay, but what, so what file throws that error? It's from data classes.py, isn't it? in the standard library. Okay, well, in that case, I think we can fix this. This is going to take some trickiness, but um, okay, so let's see, because, okay, 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 one second. Let me just write down what we just talked about. So 
Um, the first thing we talked about was, well, I guess this is the first thing we talked. Oh, okay, now the. Okay, so log type log stir instead of log int. Um, because um, logster instead of log in because uh, yeah okay the action is what changes the value and then issue with default can't be okay with fields with defaults can't be before fields fields without defaults error exception thrown from data classes dot py in okay all right, right so, so here's, here's the, the deal, deal with, with this one, one. um Da, 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 da. All right, so we have this lovely at config decorator. Um, okay. okay. Um, let's see. I would, I would say, say, okay, here's, here's what I'm going to say. say. Continue on, make defaults. Okay, so continue on uh, with everything else. Uh, Set defaults for arguments that wouldn't need them otherwise so that you can keep working. Um, and John will try to go uh, do some tricks to make this better. Not to get thrown. Um, I mean, you could try it too if you wanted to, but uh, let's see. So basically, I mean, let's let's just take a look. I, I assume it's going to be very tricky, but it may not be as tricky as we're thinking here. So let's see. Um, let's see. Dfml. Um, okay, where is it? Dfml base def config. Okay, I just don't want you to spend an inordinate amount of time on it. Um, Let's see. Okay, so this is the line that throws the error, right? Um, okay, so. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, okay, this is going to take. Who else has stuff they want to talk about? Everybody, I assume. We got Hashim and Himanshu, and it looks like Skip left us. All right. Um, let's see. All right. Um, okay. So basically, here's what we're gonna do is let me find the uh, let me find the source of the thing to show you. You can try. You can try to take a stab at it. Uh, data classes. Dot oh, Here we go. Okay. Okay, annotations, here we go. And where is that error? Um, Four ninety. Okay, non default argument follows default default argument. Fields init fn. I assume this comes from annotations. But let's check. Init fn fields 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 of life of life. fields. Where's fields here? Fields set class fields fields. All right. Let's use the word fields one more time. Um, let's see. Class annotations. Class annotations. All right. Here we go. This is what we need to do. All right. So. Um, 
the um, okay so basically when you define a class when you define let's just do this real quick so class t um, f int um, um, and then y equals so t and then t annotations so this is what you're seeing here right so t let's see and what happens wait a minute where's the defaults defaults go somewhere uh, class annotations right so basically when you define a class like this it, it puts it in this annotations thing um, and so it's grabbing from there and it's checking I looked at this before, but I got lazy and didn't fix it. So now it's no, now it's your turn. Sorry. Um, let's see. It'll be fun. Um, okay. So. Okay. Is instance get at your name field? Uh, where is this crap? All right, get field. Okay. Basically, all we need to do is just pull this stuff out and sort that dictionary. Um, it's just a question of where is the where is the default value stored? Um, where is your damn default value? The default value isn't derived from fields; only know a default value. Class a name missing. Get attribute. Class, well, where was... No, crap, that was not what I meant to do. Get field, no, okay, so class, class, process class. Um, where is the default value stored? There's got to be, there's somewhere. Okay, annotations... Uh, okay, there we go. Oh, here, perfect. So dot dick dot f. Or wait. All right, there we go. All right, okay, here we go. We're in business. All right. So, um, and what happens if we don't define default real quick? So that we can do, or will it even let us do that? Or no, they all have to have fields. So it's just going to be a field. So, because okay. So here's the other thing. Is that it won't let us. It, you, we have to say field equals field and then some description, but then I think data class goes a step further and says, like, you can't have a field that's empty with no default, right? And that's our issue right now. And so if we say f is an int and then y is a bool, which is false, then what do we end up with here? Okay, it's not in dict. So... Okay, so, but then, let's see, why is there? Okay, so the, here's what you got to do. you got to take, um, are you up for this? All right, cool. All right, great. So what we need to do is we need to, um, okay, it's going to loop over, let's see, I wonder if we can do this. Let's see, where's that loop? We need to reorganize something. I think we just need to reorganize annotations so that it hits the ones without defaults last, um, or the ones with defaults last. So we just need to like s take any ones that don't have de defaults, move them into the front of that. We need to create a new dictionary, and then we um, we grab all the ones that don't have defaults we put them at the we put them in the new dictionary and then we go through and we we go through again and we say okay everything with a default now we put that in the dictionary and then we assign annotations to be this new dictionary and then it should not throw any errors does that make sense sound good
Okay. Because basically, I believe what's happening here is, is that, that, yeah, clash annotations items. Where is that? Where's that damn thing? Where did that error go? What was it for something? For 490. 490. Okay, yeah. Non default argument follows default. Scene default for F and field scene default and fields gets built. F and field gets built by. Oh, this is handy that they added this stuff. Okay, yeah, fields get built. Fields not values. Where is that? I believe it gets built off annotations, right? Didn't we just figure that out? Let's see. Class fields. Class fields get spelled by stuff, class annotations. Yes. So that's what we need to do. All right. This shouldn't be that bad. Um, you basically just, okay. So, okay. So we haven't modified field yet, so I don't think I can comment on it. Can I? Def field. All right. So uh, I can kind of comment. Let's just put it here. Oh, okay. Below. Let's see. Or, well, it needs to go on. Let's see, where was it? Yeah, I'll just put it. Uh, okay, yes, okay, yes, let's put it here. So, um, in config uh, diff mel dot base colon config, uh, if, okay, uh, where'd that go? Let me just look at the code real quick. Okay, this isn't that bad at all. I just really uh, the the process of diving through that that data classes source code seemed more overwhelming than it was. Um, yeah, exactly right. I did this like a couple times. I was like, oh man, that looks hard, but uh, it wasn't that hard. All, all we had to do was actually just spend a few minutes reading it. Um, okay, so. Let's see, sometimes things seem like they're going to be harder than they are. All right, so in config. So, uh, before calling, will that show up nicely? It will. We need to look at, we need to make a new uh, dict. Um, uh, loop through um, class dot annotations. Or, well, I guess we should probably follow their lead and do this. Loop through because just in case there's no annotations, apparently. Um, and check if the or wait. Yeah, we need to loop through annotations um, and then and check if uh, check if the key exists in class dict um, if it does and it's a field um, then we need, then if it doesn't have a default, add it to the new dict. Uh, then loop through again, do the same thing for fields with a default. Uh, now, assign uh, class dot annotations equal to uh, the new dict. Does that sound? I think that's. I think that's the plan here. Does that sound right? Okay. Cool. All right. Great. I'm glad we figured that out. That's going to make things really. A lot easier here because um, I mean that's just an arbitrary restriction 
Like, yeah. Yeah, we've run into this before, I think. But but now we're never, never going to run into, into it. it. Yeah. So this will be great. Now we can actually subclass configs. And this is, I think this may have been the reason why. I can't remember, but yeah, this will be great. This is going to be great. All right, okay. So you'll you'll you've got that. Um, that's good because I'm I'm pressed for time lately. Um, okay, so let's um, figured out how to get uh, defaults and non defaults working out of order um, by reordering. That should be good. All right. Um, is there anything else on that? All right. That sounds great. Cool. Thanks. All right. Um, who else we got here? Uh, Hamanchu, Hashim, how are you guys doing? Good. So I don't see. Let's see. What do you guys want to talk about today? Yes, yes. Nice. Okay, well, not nice, but we'll see, right? Okay, you want to share your screen or? I should really start taking attendance at these meetings. Let's see. Uh, no. Oh, yes. Okay, there we go. Uh oh. Ooh, that, that can usually, that, that can get, get tricky. tricky. All, All right, so, so what, what do the tests, tests look like? Uh, what, what is DF, DF like, what is the DF of ML operation of RST look like? Yeah, let's, let's just, just look, look at the generated one, one just because sometimes, uh, you know, because we, we, we generate it from the, the test, test, right, or from, from the Python, Python files. files. So um, let's see. Uh, it, it should, should be, be under docs, docs plugins. plugins. All right. Okay. So let's see. What are we looking at here? Oh, oh, this, this is AST, AST literal evo. Well. So, yeah, let's find the, let's find the ones. Uh, you're gonna get into the Git repo stuff here, so it's gonna be up from here. It's gonna be towards the top. I would just, just maybe search, search for it. There's, There's a lot, lot of stuff in here. All right, here we go. So let's see. Um, okay. Ah, okay, so, so let's see. Um, Okay, and this, this is throwing an error. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so let's scroll down a bit here. Over here. Huh. 
Uh, 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 oh. Let's see. Um, that's not good. Let's see. Um, DB school light. Ah, uh, but. Oh, wait, what line is the wrong hit? Can we see the error again? Uh, there's no current... Ah, asyncio.lock. Yeah, all right, that is that. That is the culprit. Yeah, okay, so let's make an issue. That's a, that's a bug. Um, so we need to move that into... Um, um, I can just do it now. Um... I've got the file open, but basically this just should be none on creation, and then um, when we do an A enter on it, then we create the lock. Um, um, let's see if I can just fix this right now and push it up. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, Um, let me just see. Okay, yeah, that should be... Okay, and the other thing on this is that I would suggest that instead of including all of those operations in one um, example, like if you need to... Um, okay, so, so first thing, let's see. Um, so examples for operator DB operations. Let me start sharing my screen again. Um, so, okay, so examples for DP operations. So what we've got is, um, okay, so issue with no event loop running on instantiation of uh, SQLite database. Um, so solution is to create lock on a enter. Um, and then the other thing is uh, no need to create use uh, temp file because we're already in a temporary directory. Um, so the if you look at doc slash doc test header py. Um, hey, doc test. No. Oh. Okay, so one of the first things we do is we create this um, we create this temporary directory, um, and actually we should probably put this after all the imports. I don't know why I put it there. That was not a good move. Um, so, so import, import, import. Do some stuff. Import, import, import. This should go here, but that's besides the point. Um, so uh, the other thing that we should do here is um, when you have like, you, you basically we should add to the bottom of this file so to um, in doc slash doc test header.py, we should create any databases slash tables that we need to keep the examples for each operation to a minimum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so I see, uh, oh yeah, it won't even run right now because of that issue, the current issue, is that what you're saying? Okay, yeah, so, yeah, so let's, let's do, let's see, yeah, let's, let's do that, do that, um, now, okay, so this is the fix. Let me just show the fix real quick. 
this is the we do this. I believe this is the fix. Um, so this is what it this is what it looks like now, right? And this is causing an error because we're creating a lock when there's no event loop. If we do this, um, if we say lock equals none, and then we create the lock when there's an event loop, then we should be fine here. Um, now, the only thing is that, uh, let me just make sure that there's a super function call there. Uh, yeah. Uh. Wait, what are we subclassing from here? No. No. Wait a minute. Okay, maybe we should make this the standard then. All right, well, all is well. Um, this should do the trick here. Okay. Um... Yeah, so take this and do, uh, so let's see, um, so I think if you paste this on in there and try rerunning the test, let's see what happens. So just like paste from git through EOF and um, I'm sorry, I guess we just consistently run over. There's just so much to talk about these days. Uh, just paste it into, uh, like, if you're at the root of the DFFML repo, um, just paste from uh, git through EOF. Um, so, like, copy from, I, I can show you, actually, I'll just do it here. Um, let me show you, and I'll, we'll just do the same thing. Um, so, let's see. Uh, here, I'm just doing this to reset what I had. But so, if I want to... So right now I've got no changes. God damn, I hate this stupid little thing. Um, and now if I take this and I paste uh, here like this. Oops, 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 shit, what happened there? Oh, oops, my bad. I forgot an arrow. There we go. Now you should see um, these changes show up. Okay, cool.
All right. I was getting worried there. I was like, oh no, what if this isn't the issue? I feel like I've seen this one a million times, but I was going to be very, it was going to be a, we were going to spend all day on this one if that wasn't it. <laughs> that was going to be a rabbit hole. All right, okay, great. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Let me just create this. Yeah, I'm sure you have, yeah, because that one is, I mean, I only know this one because I have spent a long, long time trying to debug this one before, which was going to make me say, if it's not this, then it's going to be a long, 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 long time trying to figure out what the hell this is. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of these things can really be a pain. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess we need a kind DB in here. I was trying to give things a little more organization recently with the issues, but let's see. Let me just say... And this will be, um, so you can just close this issue um, when you push that change. Um, cool. Um, let's see. All right. Yay. So, uh, should, okay. And so you should be able to, um, you should be able to like do an async IO dot run and stuff in this. Right, so if you were to just like define an async function and then put, like, if you were to define an async function like here and then do async io dot run here of that async function that had all the stuff that was creating the tables you needed, it should work fine. Um, hopefully, I mean, we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, I think it should work fine. If not, then we'll figure it out from there. You may just need to like create a new event loop and stuff. Um, but we'll get, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, if, if it turns out to be weird. Um, but yeah, sweet. All right. This is great. Yeah. It'll be great to have some, some more of this database, um, examples here. Uh, cause obviously data, uh, people use databases a lot. So, uh, this will be very nice. Uh, there's another thing actually, there's one of the guys, uh, Theo, he submitted some stuff to... Uh, once Sharksham has this unified config stuff down, we'll finally have some sense to the merge command, and then it'll be easier to like get stuff into the SQLite databases or other databases. Um, and uh, we'll need to go like, yeah, we'll basically we'll document that merge command, and then we're going to be able we're going to be able to get a lot more use out of the SQLite database stuff um, because he created a source that works with any database that we implement, and so. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we can, can basically, basically just, like, plug into the databases and the sources and stuff, and that'll be really nice. So it'll be great to have these examples to show people how to work with it all. All right. right. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Hashim. Is there anything else you needed? Um, just wanted to talk about or anything? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah go for it. Yeah. Hmm. Um, let's see. Okay, 247. Okay. Um. Okay, let's see. Do, it looks DBSQL. And we are looking at query values reference before 247. Um. Oh, uh, yeah, it's 100% uh, correct. Oh, Agen, I don't think we ever actually tested the remove stuff. Did we? I don't see any. Or are there? Let's see. Maybe. Um... There's db 
query remove. Um, test three remove. Okay, yeah, that is there is a remove test. I thought there was one that we did a. Uh, we just uh, commented out, but okay. Um, let's see. Well, I mean the. I mean, if you look at the function here. Uh, there is no query value values variable in that function, um, so it's correct. I mean that that error is correct. There's definitely it definitely was referenced before assignment. Um, so I guess like what are we doing with that? Um, let's see. I guess we should check SQL Lite here. Let me share my screen again so you guys can see. We can just like. Um, Okay, so remove, remove query, query values. Okay, what the hell is going on here? Um, um, well, I think we just need this to be... Uh, an empty, um, what is query values? I think it's a tuple. Or is it a, what has a dot extend method? Is it a tuple? Or no, it's a list. Okay. Well, let's just make a list then. Let's just make it a list, empty list. Or, but that's not right. Query values. Oh, if condition dict is not. None. So condition dict was none. No worries. Let's see. Okay, query values. It looks like. Okay. It's not none. Okay. Yeah. All we need is just a query values equals array here. I think. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, just why don't yeah just add that there, Hashim. Um, Okay, so let's see. Yeah, DFFML DB SQLite. Okay, and then we'll make an issue for that. You'll be closing a bunch of issues with this. Um, let's see. New issue. Let's see. Um, let's see. DB. Oh, and I think, Agen, I think I actually solved the problem that we were running into on. Uh, the this guy, the simplifying the example, um, because I believe we had an issue with export, if I remember correctly, and I solved an export issue not that long ago. Um, so this may, yeah, we should try. We should try seeing what's up with this. I think. Uh, okay. We should look at what the hell happened here. Oh God! Oh Jesus! Oh no! This is not going to be good. All right. Yeah, I think we have. Uh, hopefully, that's because those conflicts are just unused imports. But okay. Um, okay. DB SQLite uh, remove query um, query values referenced before assigned if no conditions. Um, okay, so let's just make this a complete. And making issues sometimes seems like too much work, but then when you go back and you're like, what did we do? It's very helpful. Um, okay. Okay. All right, sweet. Um, okay, is there anything else going on here then if you rerun them?
Hashim, is there is there anything else immediately that we should um, should debug? Okay, great. All right. All right. So let me make a note of this. So no no problem. Of course. Thank you. Examples for DB operations. Um, yeah, we are really moving a lot of code lately. We got a lot of people working, so this is, things are sweet. Um, examples for DB operations. So had ran into an issue with with remove query in diff.tv sql.py all right um all right is that it for you hashim all right cool all right himachu what did you uh, want to talk about today Are you there? We can't hear you. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, uh, can you post it somewhere or share so we can see? If you post the stack trace to Gitter, that'll work too. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right, okay. No worries. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but let's see. So trace malloc, really, do you remember exactly what it was? Um, oh, it may be SSL errors. Is there problems with SSL connection? Yeah, yeah, okay, yep, that'll do. Um, uh, I guess, okay, so I believe we're using AIO HTTP. Um, okay, so uh, AIO HTTP uh, SSL uh, trace malloc. Let's see if this issue is still open. Um, and yeah, it's probably still open. Uh, yeah, basically, basically sometimes, sometimes that, that happens. happens. There used to be an open issue on AIO HTTP saying basically that just like this happens sometimes. Um, let's see, where's SSL? There, yeah, he used to have an open issue on here and he was basically just like, there's a problem, problem with the underlying... underlying um, thing um, in Python. Where is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, we can find it or we cannot find it, but there's, there's, I want to find it though. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't know where it is. But um, yeah, there used to be. I remember I I ran into that too, and it's like he has some explanation about it, um, but it sounds like it has something to do with like the underlying uh, library, 
um, like in AsyncIO itself. Um, and so I, I think it might just be something that gets fixed. Like what version of Python are you on? Point six. Okay. Yeah, I just recently upgraded mine to three point seven point seven. I don't know if you want if you want to try to upgrade. I use Py and Vi, and that works pretty well for me. Um, you could try upgrading and see if that helps, or you could just sort of ignore it and then like. And then once you post, I mean, once you post it, we might find out that it's something else. But I haven't seen that error lately. I also haven't made tons of HTTP requests lately. Um, but yeah, this happens, especially if you create a sh ton of requests, um, you'll start getting these. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm not sure. It's It, it exists. There's an issue that exists that, that talks about all this. Oh, no. Uh, anyways, yeah. So I guess let's just like hold off on this one and see if it still happens. Um, once you're pushing it up, if it happens in the CI logs, we'll, we'll be concerned. Um, if not, we'll... We'll deal with it later. Okay, cool. So, uh, scene SSL um, unclosed socket errors. All right, it's something like there's an un uh, there's some lingering socket somewhere that's SSL related, right? I can't remember, but it may not be that. You may be hitting another issue. Either either way, we'll just note that you're hitting um, some issue. We'll check it out once. We'll check CI logs to see if it's just local or uh, a persistent. Uh, might be related to an IO HTTP issue we couldn't find. All right. Sweet. Uh, anybody got anything else? Or, yeah. Go for it. Sweet. All right, great. Yeah, yeah, that'll be sweet. So this is what another thing I wanted to mention is uh, this, this is going to be uh, probably will be basis for first blog post um, under. So basically, what I was thinking is we can do some. Like we've got the tutorials and we've got the use cases, but those are really, you know, those are primarily still focused on like how do you use this stuff. And this would be more of like, okay, it'll show you a little bit how you use operations and things, but it also, you know, we'll collect some data and have sort of, you know, kind of like research papers are like, oh, we did X, Y, Z. Well, okay, this is like, you know, something something that we, we did an analysis using. We're basically just going to point this at a bunch of open source uh, distros and say, hey, do you have this security feature turned on? Um, and then, uh, and then hopefully, you know, we shame those who don't have it on into turning it on. <laughs> That's the end goal here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, does anybody have anything else they want to talk about, or we'll call it a day or a night for you guys? All right. Well, it was good talking to you guys and uh, great first Friday meeting. So uh, we may, I guess we went long on this one too. So I guess we may just end up doing, um, may just end up putting uh, another, well, I guess we got Tuesday and Friday. Those are pretty evenly spaced out. Who knows? I guess, I guess we'll, we'll see next week if we, still, if we continue to have a lot of, a lot of going over then. Uh, then, then we'll, we'll just make, make another meeting. And I mean, we could we could even just do one every weekday. And then if you feel like joining, you feel like joining. If not, uh, you don't. And that way, people can sort of space out uh, when they want to join. Um, but yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. And yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys can. I mean, you can always send me, uh, you know, you can always just ask me if, if you need something from me specifically if you want to just talk you can always just ask me um schedule some time one-on-one -on -one. um but it is you know it is of course nice to have the group meeting because then we all know what each other are working on because uh, we all end up switching around at different parts of the code base as time goes on so it, it's it's helpful to uh 
to hear what everybody else has to say. But of course, yeah, one-on-one -on -one time is good too. All right, yeah, so feel free to, feel free. If you ever want a one-on-one -on -one with me, just let me know and we'll set up some time. All right, thanks guys. And uh, we'll uh, talk to you on Tuesday and on Gitter. Have a good one. Bye.